Hello, this is Maria, and welcome to my Stamping World. Today I want to show you how to make this cute little back-to-school backpack. The backpack that I showed you was blue, and that was I made that for my grandson. Now I'm going to make one for my granddaughter, and her favorite color is pink. So the base of the backpack will be pretty in pink. The coordinating paper is the pink paper and it's from the flirtatious designer paper series so the pieces that you'll need you'll need a 7 by 11 piece of cardstock you'll also need a top note die cut in the same color you'll need to cut a scallop envelope die in the pretty in pink and in the coordinating cardstock another scallop envelope and another top note die. As I mentioned the paper is cut at seven and a half and now using your favorite scoring tool you will score at one half inch I have already scored this one half inch three and three quarter inch four and three quarter five and three quarter nine and ten that's along the long side. Along the other side, you score it at one and a half, one and a half inches. Now, after you have scored your paper with a pair of paper snips, cut on the scored lines up to the one and a half inch line. So I will go ahead and do that. And I'll just finish and I'll just finish cutting those and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I have cut along the scored lines up to the one and a half inch line. Now the next thing, this half inch piece here, this half inch scored piece, I'm just going to snip it right off. These two pieces and these two pieces, you can choose to cut in half to reduce the bulk, but if you're planning on putting something heavy in the backpack, you might not want to do that. I, however, am going to do that. So I'm not planning on putting anything heavy. in the backpack. Now on these two pieces I'm going to just cut a little wedge along the ends and that makes putting the backpack together uh, a little bit neater and a little bit easier. See the wedge? Okay, now the next thing is you want to fold along the score lines. Now, because this is a backpack and you want to put some straps on the back, like I've done here, you have to identify the back and make some holes where you would thread the ribbon through. Now, I have pre-identified the holes and made a mark with a pencil. And first of all, you have to identify the back of the backpack. And just to give you a hint, it's right next to the half inch scored, li scored line. This is the top. This is the bottom. This is the flap that will become the bottom. So you measure one and an eighth inch down and five eighths of an inch across. One and an eighth, five inches. And then make a mark with the pencil. And you do that 
four times. Two on the top, two on the bottom. With the crocodile, line up your hole and punch. If you have another favorite punching tool, that's that's fine. You can you can use that. Now this is the hardest one to get at. So what I do is I just fold this in half, and later on you'll see that it's really not going to make any difference. If you fold it up this way, you'll see with this hole that if you now punch a hole, you'll punch a hole in the bottom. So you have to get this little flap out of the way and just fold it double like this. And you can see by checking the hole that there is no flap there. And you just push, put your crocodile in and punch a hole. Now insert some eyelets in the hole and that prevents it from tearing with the movement of the backpack. And these are the jumbo eyelets and they're um, the antique brass. I'll show you how to put one of them in. Insert it in the hole from the front to the back. And this is the part of the crocodile that you use to uh, put the eyelet in and the, the raised part of the eyelet goes um, along the top. You put it in this way. It sits on it this way. I don't know if you, if you can see that. Anyway, can you see how I've got that positioned? Okay, make sure that I've got this right. and then just gently squeeze the handle and you'll actually feel the eyelet going in. Okay, I'm gonna put the other eyelets in and I'll be right. Okay, all the eyelets are in. Now insert the ribbon through the eyelets and I have chosen the 5 8 inch white satin ribbon. I tried pink, but it was just too much pink. And it's about 12 inches in length. And what I do is I cut the ribbon at an angle so that there's, so it has a pointy tip and that is easier to insert through an opening. Start at the top or at the bottom, it doesn't matter, but insert from front to back. Just pull it up, doesn't matter how long because you can pull it back and then now tie a knot in the end so that it doesn't pull back through the opening. Don't tie the knot too tightly. And then just gently pull it back. Now back to the front. I do one at a time. If you can find, you can do both at the same time, then that's, that's fine. Again, tie a knot. There, you have the string for the backpack. I'll put the other one in. The box is ready to be put together and I have put sticky strip tape along the flaps that were cut um, on the right side and also on the right side along the one half inch piece and on the other side on the front flap of the bottom. Remember, this is the back flap, and remember it has it has the little 
fold in it. Now assemble the bottom first. And I like to assemble the back part first. And just a little, little tip for you. Um, a lot of people find, and myself included, found that it was really hard to get the pink layer off the, the sticky strip. If you rub it with the bone folder, the top should come off very easily. Voila. And I have to dispose of these little, the tops very carefully because I have a cat called Mischief, very well named. And he loves to eat these pieces, but then he's sick all over my rug. So that's not such a good idea. Okay, then you just take this back flap. I don't know if you can see, but you just attach that. There, that's partly done. Now, um, Now I do these, and again, wrap it with a bone folder. And I'm just suggesting an order. If you find that doing it in another, another way is easier for you, then, then that's fine as well. Now this is the front. This is the front flap, and I always do it last, and it's going to fit. I should have left that one to the end. I'm just loosen that one there. Okay. okay. Okay, so before doing those, correction, before doing those, do these. Do this front flap. Now these flaps go inside. Inside. And then finally this flap, and it can be a little bit tricky because it has to it has to fit inside here. straight. Now, now again, remove the tape to cover off the tape and neatly press the sides together. My bottom isn't very straight. I wonder if I can just I'm going to try and take that front piece off and rep reposition it. I'll be right back. Okay, so the bottom and sides of your box are done and you just push the little the little flaps in like this and you have what is basically the basis for the backpack. Now let's let me show you how to do the top and the little the thing below. <laughs> it's not off, but I can't think of the name of it. Let me show you now how to make the top and the pocket below. 
you'll need your, let's do the, the top. You'll need your top note die in the pretty in pink and in the patterned paper. You'll also need some adhesive. I mount one on top of the other, but if you do that, then one of the the patterned paper kind of overpowers the pink. So what I suggest you do is with the pair of paper snips, you see that the top note die has has some some stitching in it, and in the patterned paper, what I do is I just cut along this stitching so that it becomes smaller and when you put the pieces together the pretty and pink cardstock shows up from underneath it and I do the same to the scallop envelope die. So now you just put a little adhesive There we go. Now you want to fold this in half. You, again, you can use your favorite scoring device if you wish. And then fold it really well with your bone folder. Okay, that's the top. I'll show you how to put it on shortly. The scallop envelope die is the same, and again, if I was, if I again, if I was to put one on top of the other, again, the pattern paper would make it disappear. But in this case, I only cut off a lot, right up to the scallop along the scallop of the of the um, um, scallop envelope die. I didn't bother around the rest. It's going to be folded over anyway, so. Before I do that, I'm just going to fold up my lines, the folds. I'm just going to fold that up. And the same with this. Now I'll apply some adhesive. And I apply it on both sides of the fold line. And then when putting it together, make sure that your pattern paper fits just at the scallop, at the dotted lines of your envelope. There. Okay, refold on the fold lines and again fold well, crease well with your bone folder. If you don't crease well, it won't stay closed very well. And I'm speaking from experience here. Before gluing the sides of the envelope shut, I'd like to insert a brad in there as decoration. And I'm going to use a, a brad that's retired, one of the epoxy brads. It just fits with this color so well. You can use an antique brad or a flower brad um, I'm just, because I'm giving it to my granddaughter, she likes pink so much, I'll, I'm going to use the epoxy bread. Like I said, it is retired. Then with the matte pick and uh, the matte pack and the paper piercer, just make a hole. Insert the brad. And we're done. Okay. Notice that I closed the envelope and lined it up to make sure that the brad would not be 
would not interfere with opening the envelope. Now we can put some adhesive on these little flaps. And don't, don't uh, glue it down too tightly because you want to be able to put some things in it. Now you can keep this closed with a piece of Velcro if you wish. Okay. So that's the back. This is the front. And you can do this two ways. And I have done this two ways. Is it fits over the top like this. But if you put it so that the top note top of the, the crease is is right um, on top of the edge of the bag then if you look at the back it covers the holes so you can either move it up like this so that the back is just above the um, the eyelets which makes your backpack actually look longer and I quite I quite like that look so that's what I'm going to go for I didn't do that with the blue one with this one, I what I did was I, I cut off part of the top note. So if you like the smaller, more compact look, that's what you can do. So I'm only going to glue or put some adhesive on the back part. I want to be able to open up the backpack. Center it as best you can. It's not straight. There. And again, with a piece of Velcro, you can keep that, that closed. This gets put on here and you can have it close to the bottom like this or you can move it up, up higher. Now, I think I'd like to move it up a, a little bit higher because this top is is higher but before I position it I do put a little decoration on with a, a scallop around scallop circle and I'll just hold that there just to make sure that I'm not interfering when I put the envelope on that I'm not interfering with the little with the um, decoration. Put some adhesive on the back. Today is not my day for putting things on straight. Okay, there we go. All right, so, so far that's what it looks like. Okay, to do the little decoration, I punched out a scallop circle punch. I punched out a one and three eighths inch of the pattern paper and I'm going to use the other side of the pink and that's because what I've done is I've taken the stamp set little friends and I've um, watercolored the little girl and she has purple and pink dress on and yes my granddaughter is blonde and I cut that out in one and a quarter inch circle and I'll layer it like that I think the Wisteria Wonder uh, looks quite pretty. So there. Okay. 
and this is going to go onto the lid. Okay, so I'm just going to put some adhesive on the top. You can put some Velcro right, up, right under, under the image and hold it down. Sometimes Velcro works quite nicely, other times it doesn't. But anyway, and that's your completed backpack. So this is the backpack for my daughter. This is the one that I made for my eldest grandson and I used the flower brad there and the stamp was from Greeting Card Kids. And this one I made for my other grandson. You can't make one without making them for all. And um, this is um, a different designer series, the birthday top uh, designer series. And I just wrote the letter A plus on there. So, so this is for my middle grandson and now for my granddaughter. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching.